analyze a snap ring for its static structural analysis. Now these are two types of snap rings. They are also called as retaining rings. The reason being they are used to hold something in its position. For example, if you attach this retaining ring, which is called as an external retaining ring on a shaft, the shaft will be held at its position. As you can see, this is a retaining ring. This is a shaft in a particular groove. So the shaft will not come out of the groove when you attach a retaining ring here. And once you remove it with the help of pliers, the two ends of the pliers are fixed at these, in these two holes and they are just pulled apart so that this just comes out. Then the shaft is free to move again. So this is how you hold something in position by using this kind of a retaining ring or it is called as a snap ring. Now this is the external one, so this will be the internal one. Now if you want to differentiate between the two, by looking at the diagram you can understand that when this curvature moves inwards, it will be called as an internal snap ring and when it turns outwards, it will be called as an external snap ring. Now internal snap rings as the name suggests, they are internally attached. I'll show you an image for it, it will be something like this. You can see this is a snap ring, this is called as an internal ring. It is internally attached into something. An external one is actually attached externally. As I'll show you, on the shaft when you attach it externally, it will be an external ring. And when you attach internally, it will be the internal ring. It is also called as a retaining ring. So this is the basics of it. We are going to analyze an internal snap ring. So we will first go to access verbiage. We will start by double clicking on static structural. We will go to engineering data. Now there are various types of materials used. I am using this particular type of material for analysis. It is AISI 1070. This is the composition that is given for this carbon steel. You can read here at the bottom, it is SAE AISI 1070 carbon steel and these are the composition materials and this is the properties that we are going to use. So we are going to use the density value, elastic modulus that is Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio for structural analysis. So I'll just write the name of material as carbon steel. We'll give the value of density in gram per centimeter cube. As you see here, the range is 7.7 .7 to 8.03. I'm using the highest value. So I'll write here 8.03. Next, we need the value of isotropic elasticity. So, this is defined by the use of Young's modulus. So, if you check here, Young's modulus is 190 to 210 gigapascal. Again, I'm taking the highest value. So, it is 210 E9 pascals. Poison's ratio, if you see here, it is 0 0.27 to 0 0.3. You can either average out the value or you can use the Highest value. So I've taken 0.3. So once this is done, I'll go to project and update project. Next, I'll go to geometry and right click. I have already created the geometry. I will give you the link for this geometry of snap ring. Next, we'll go to model and double click on it. We'll first go to geometry and change the material to carbon steel. Next, I'll go to mesh and change the sizing to fine and update. Next, we'll go to static structural. Now, if you observe, the ring has been pressed by the use of pliers over here and then it sits on a particular area. So, obviously, there will be a stress generated on this material because there is a pressure which is exerted on the inner surface. So on the inner surface, I will insert 
टेक्सचर ऑफ से पॉइंट फाइव मेगा पास्कल और मे बी पॉइंट टू फाइव Also, it is fixed at this bottom end because that's where it is resting. So here I am going to insert fixed support. Then I'll go to solution and insert deformation total. I also want to see the strain and the stress generated on the material. Also, I'll go to tools and select stress tool so that I can see the safety factor of this body. Then I'll go to solution and solve. Okay, so you can just see there is an error given here. Yield strength is required, but it is not defined. So we'll just check here if we have the value of yield strength. Okay, it's not given here. But I just found out the value, so I will add the value as well. So we'll go back to engineering data to this material. It is asking for yield strength, so I'll just fill that inside yield strength over here. The value is four ninety five mega pascal. So once I've given this value, I'll go to project and update project. Now you can see the value of safety factor has been obtained because I have given the yield strength. So first we'll go to total deformation. Just animate and check the result. The maximum value of deformation is two point five four nine. It will tend to minus six mm, which means that the deformation is very very less on this body. Next, you can see the value of strain. The value is three point six seven nine. It will tend to minus six. This value again is very small. That too, it is the maximum value it is showing. That is the highest value it is shown. And the other value is one point five six into ten raised to minus nine. Again, a very very small amount of strain induced in the body. You can animate and check the result. Next, we'll go for EQL stress. Here, the maximum stress generated is point seven seven mega pascal. Again, a very small value. That too, it is the highest value. The minimum value is four point four four into ten raised to minus five megapascal. Very less a value of stress generated on this body. If you see the safety factor, it is showing fifteen, which means your body is going to be highly safe under this amount of pressure. So if I just change this pressure to point five and run the solution once again. So you can just check the value of deformation, stress, strain, and safety factor accordingly. Safety factor has not changed much. The stress has increased a bit. It is one point five four five mega pascal. Strain is seven point three five ten to minus six, and the deformation is five point zero nine eight two ten to minus six mm. Again, a very small value. So you can just check for the snap ring by using this material. There are many other materials which are available in the market for this type of rings. You can have material of any other stainless steel or any other cold drawn or hot rolled steels. You can also have aluminium as a material. You can have cast iron as a material. So various types of material are available for this snap ring. So snap rings are available in various materials. You can choose any material of your choice. For your application, I have just shown you with one material that is carbon steel, AISI one zero seven zero. So with this, I end the session. If you have any doubts, please write to me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for latest video updates. See you in the next session. Thank you.